shall be. An age of seemingly endless controversy, conflict, not only in our society here, but in the world. Particularly this last week. It is easy to allow what is prominent in our culture to dominate our lives our sense of who we are, of what we ultimately are, and most importantly, who we must follow. In other words, it's easy to make the word our world our temple and to offer ourselves to false gods. Certainly we can see this. If you don't see that it's happening all around you, that means that we're being affected by it. No matter what form it takes, it's just adultery. Today we celebrate a feast that invites us to a totally different way of living and of thinking that is focused on offering ourselves to the Lord, but not to idols, not to the world, to not those things that are distracting us day after day after day. The feast of the entrance of the Theotokos into the temple. Remember when the Virgin Mary was a little girl. We hear just about three years old. With her parents and Joachim and Anna, who took her to, to live in the temple in Jerusalem. Now remember that Mary was born miraculously. Anna had been barren, yet she bore a child. And they dedicated her to the light of to God. And they took her to the temple for that reason. They're an old, faithful, and barren temple. Barrenness was considered to be a great shame for most people. But they conceived miraculously nonetheless. And she, and when they offered her to the temple, you can see in the icon that's in the back there this procession that took place. You can imagine the Yochim and Anna, and you can see all of the family who carrying their torches. Zechariah was the uh, 
was the high priest at that time, and this little girl, like this, ran up the steps, right past Zachariah. <laughs> you can imagine he's up there like this, you know, <laughs> and straight into the Holy of Holies. We heard in the in the uh, uh, epistle lesson today that the priest went there once a year. And it was with great peril. I'm sure that many of you know this, but also those who have not heard or not understand that, know how the temple operated when the high priest was, it was his time to go into the Holy of Holies. His garment had bells down the side of it, and they tied a rope around him. And when he went in, if the jingling stopped, you know, they would haul him out because. He had succumbed, he wasn't worthy, and he had died. So this is not a place that everybody went. When Bishop Thomas comes here in a couple of weeks, you will see the reflection of that in his sockles, which is the outer garment that they wear, it has bells down the side of it as well. She grew up in the temple. She grew up in this holy of holies. She became a living temple for the Lord when she agreed to become the mother of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We know that the word Theotokos means bearer of or mother of God. And she is, and it is this title because of the one whom she bore, the one whom she gave birth, is truly the eternal Son of God. Because of Theotokos had accepted Christ into her life in this unique way. Every human, from now on, has the opportunity to become his living temple by taking his humanly form, and he took his humanity from her. Let us not forget, Jesus Christ was united to every dimension of our life in his divinity. As the second Adam, he has healed and restored all that went with the first Adam. He has made us his temple already through the incarnation. But our calling during this season of the Nativity <coughs> Fast is not merely to acknowledge that we are his temple and then live according to the conventional standards of our or any other standard. That's an oxymoron. Instead, we are to become more faithful and pure temples so that we can be prepared to welcome him and the integrity with the integrity of our lives this Christmas. This Christmas. And there is no better way to do it than following the example of the Theotokos, who was by no means a powerful, famous, conventionally influential person, according to the standards of our culture. She was a local maid. The church gives us gospel passages today that highlights her characteristics. When the sa Savior visited the home of Lazarus, Sister Martha was busy serving the guests. She was bustling about. While her other sister Mary sat at Christ's feet and listened to his teaching. When Martha complained that her sister was not helping her, as we heard in this gospel lesson, she went to the Savior and she complained. And the Savior told her that she was worried about and troubled about many things, but only one thing was needed. And Mary had chosen to focus on that one thing needful. In other words, Mary had focused on the Lord, on his hearing his word, on responding to him with faith. It was not wrong for Martha to serve her guests. The problem was that her busyness had become a distraction from the one ultimately important thing of fully being attentive to her Lord, who was there visiting. We also read in the Gospel today that when someone cried out, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you, 
Christ responded, more than that, blessed is, are those that hear the word of God and keep it. These passages point to the Theotokos, for she certainly heard the word of God and kept more than this than anyone else, and in a particular way. She is uniquely blessed because she was prepared to respond in obedience to that astounding message when the archangel Gabriel came to her and announced to her that she was going to become the mother of the Messiah. She welcomed Christ into her life in this unfathomable way. None of us can even imagine how beautiful she was. None. With all our concerns about our society and the world, about our family and personal circumstances, it is difficult to follow the Theotokos as a bad example of hearing and obeying the word of the Lord. It is easy to be distracted. Particularly this time of year, we allow things to distract us. Forget about the news. Let's say you're not even thinking about that. But think about everyone busting about thinking about Christmas. We hear in the news that there's going to be a shortage. All of you gotta go buy. Gotta spend money and we gotta have, you know, all of these things. And we spend so much time planning meals and planning gifts and planning everything. Nonetheless, we must follow her example instead. If we are not careful, our attention may be diverted from the reason. Then we are waiting for Christmas to happen. What this is all about, the birth of our Savior, will not become better temples to the Lord by letting controversies, work, school, party, <laughs> shopping, the bad news that we hear every day, and a thousand other things, unfortunately, from keeping us focused on the one thing needful. <laughs> the one thing needful that I've just identified. In the midst of all these distractions, we must focus on Christ. Welcome Him into even the dark and painful areas of our life. It's easy for us when things are peaceful and we say, oh, I have my peace and I can welcome Christ. But well, what happens when we're having difficult time then even more we must accept him and invite him to our help we must refuse to allow earthly cares no matter how appealing they are to keep us from entering into the temple to distract us from following the Theotokos and uniting in every dimension of who we are to Christ that will be possible, however, only if we make a renewed commitment to prayer, which includes attending services faithfully, praying at home each day. It also includes praying silently whenever we have the opportunity. We have lots of opportunities. Think of how much time you spent watching that movie last night, or the time that you spent just wasting time. Five minutes of it could have been spent in prayer or more. Instead of obsessively fueling this fear or worrying about a grudge, we should focus our minds on the Jesus prayer as we call for, Jesus, for Christ's mercy in our heart. Instead of damning others with whom we disagree or often offended us, we ask God to bless them and have mercy on them. Our Lord refused to become an earthly king to define himself in unconventional world categories. He said that we must love our enemies, and he prayed from the cross for his Father to forgive those who had crucified him. His mother prepared to receive him through prayer and purity in a way that had nothing to do with conventional assumptions about power, influence in that particular time and place. Likewise, 
we must make a humble prayer the cornerstone of our life in order to find the strength to reject the false gods of our age and to choose the one thing needful, the good part, which that will not be taken away once we choose it. Anything else, as I have said, is idolatry. Even as we grow in prayer during this Christmas fast, we must remember that hearing the word of God and keeping it also has a lot to do with cleansing ourselves from all that is not holy, from all that does not belong in the temple, those things in our life that are bent and not of God. Thoughts, words, deeds. We are ashamed to offer the end for blessing. We have no place, we have no place in our heart for him. We should shut our eyes and ears to that which inflames the passions. In other words, turn off the news. We should turn our attention away from thoughts of self-righteousness, anger, envy, lust, and unholy temptations. We should go out of our way to love and bless our enemies and those whom we are common to think the worst of. We must become holy temples of the Lord by following the Theodophilus' example of purity and obedience as we grow in our participation in God's holiness. That is why this season is a time for repentance, for confessing our sins in humility, for being assured of God's forgiveness, then getting ourselves back on the right course. This is what this time of the year is all about. Let us not forget. It's also a time for eating a humble and simple diet that requires us to place limits on how we satisfy our stomach and our taste buds. In other words, our passions. We are all addicted to satisfying our self-centered desires in one way or another, and fasting is a tool for giving us strength in healing our passions and reordering, reordering <coughs> our desires to God in a healthy way. The point is not legalism. It sounds like it, but it's not legalism. And God wants us simply to be hungry or unsatisfied, but that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord as we gain strength to offer every dimension of our lives to Him. This strengthens us. Too much food weakens us. Think about Thanksgiving right after dinner. <laughs> that will tell you all those dispensations you know. But that's how it weakens us. Fasting is a powerful tool for helping us grow in holiness as more faithful living temples of Christ. Unless we have been advised by our spiritual father or physician not to fast from rich food and that for which there is a dispensation for medical reasons and for many reasons. However, we should make all the best use of this tool for the healing of our souls. No matter what our condition is, we can fast in one manner or another and bring this great healing for ourselves. Weeks of the Nativity Fast are a time of joyful present pre preparation to receive Christ at his birth. They provide us with an alternative to the angry and anxious ways of our culture. And on this feast of the entrance of the day of Tophos into the temple, they call us to follow the example of someone who is very different to the one, uh, ones people usually think of who are important in life, the ones that we raise up as being the elite, we so think. We celebrate the Theotokos' entry into the temple because that was the beginning of her personal formation into one human being, all history who agreed to give life to Christ as a mother, to become his living temple in a unique and astounding way. She was not an empress from a wealthy point of view, or powerful family, young girl, a maiden, who focused on the one thing needful to the, to the 
point, uh, to the point, by God's grace, she became the new Eve through whom the Savior was born. God still works with humble, faithful people like her to accomplish his gracious purposes. My prayer is that all of us, all of us, is that we will use the weeks of the nativity facts this year to follow her holy example. There is surely nothing more important that we can do for the salvation of the world, the healing of our souls, for preparing ourselves for the joy of Christmas. And I pray that it be so for each of us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>